Hi there, I'm here today to talk to you about what uh, a spit is. So a spit essentially is a depositional landform that you can find on the coastline in a number of different locations. So you can see an example of a spit on the left hand side here. So this spit in particular is called Spurn Point. Now Spurn Point is located on the Holderness coastline which is in the UK and in particular on the northeast coastline of the UK as you can see here. Now in order to understand uh, how a spit forms, we must quickly recap what longshore drift is. Now remember, waves rarely hit the coastline or reach the coastline um, at an angle, at a right angle to the coastline. So they very, very rarely arrive at the coastline uh, perfectly uh, at a right angle to the coast. Okay, so they very rarely arrive at that at that angle, but most likely arrive at a different angle, and that is controlled by something called the prevailing wind. So the prevailing wind is just the most common wind direction that we have at a particular coastline. So this prevailing wind is coming in on, on this angle here, okay, on this angle here. So it's driving the waves at this angle in towards the coastline. So as these waves move towards the beach, obviously as they move up the beach, we call that the swash. So as these waves move up the beach and carry sediment up the beach at this angle, i.e. through the swash, they take the material up onto the beach at this angle, but return... They return from the beach back to the sea at a right angle. So they arrive and move up the beach via the swash at this angle that the prevailing wind controls, but move back at a right angle. Okay, they move back at, at a right angle perpendicular to the coastline via the backwash. So sediment is moved up the beach in this direction, back down in a straight line. Up the beach in this direction, back down in a straight line. Up the beach in this direction, back down in a straight line. And over time, the sediment that might have started here will end up down here through this process of longshore drift that shifts the sediments down the coastline. Now we've got a diagram here that shows us, uh, that shows us a coastline. Okay? So we've got something that we call a, a bay here. Okay? So we've got a bay here, we've got a headland here, and we've got a river channel here. So we've got the mouth of a river coming out into, the, into another bay here. Now I'm not going to describe why we've got a headland and a bay like this formation in this video, but there is a link in the description that will take you to explain why that might have occurred. So what have we got on this diagram? We've got a beach here, we've got a beach material here, which is obviously a depositional landform, okay? Now we've got our prevailing wind direction, which is coming from this direction here, okay? So this here is our prevailing wind. So our prevailing wind is coming from this direction um, in, this, in this example. So if we've got a prevailing wind coming on this direction, the sediment on this beach is being pushed up onto the beach at this angle, but brought back perpendicular. Pushed up through the swash at this angle, brought back perpendicular. So through the process of longshore drift, which occurs over time, the sediment is slowly being shifted down the coastline in this direction. So this is the process of longshore drift, or LSD I'll put for short. So the process of longshore drift is driving and moving and transporting the sediment down the coastline in this direction. So if all this sediment is being transported down to, down to this headland, what we have at this point here is something called a change in coastline. So we have a distinct change in the, uh, in the coastline. Okay, So we have a change in the coastline. And this change in coastline results in our sediment beginning to be deposited on the end of this headland. So this sediment's been shifted down by longshore drift, down in this direction, and as it reaches this changing coastline, it's got nowhere else to go, it has to start depositing, and it starts to accumulate in the corner of the headland, on the corner of the changing coastline. Now over time, this sediment is continually shifted down the coast, and we get a continual and gradual build-up of sediments that starts to accumulate off the headland itself. And that essentially is the formation of a spit. That is the spit that's deposited uh, off the coastline of the headland. Okay? Now, although our prevailing wind might come from, from this direction in general, wind obviously doesn't always come from one direction. So we might have a secondary wind that in actual fact comes from this direction. So this could be our secondary wind or our second wind, our second most common wind direction. Now obviously if we've got sediment that's building up in this direction and we actually have a wind that isn't as common as our prevailing wind but is quite common coming from this direction, our spit might start to turn a little bit and we can start to develop what we call 
a hook on the spit. Okay, a hook on the spit. It can curve the end of the spit. Now, if we've got a nice big buildup of sediment here, okay, we get quite a sheltered area in behind the spit itself in this area here. So if we've got quite a sheltered area here, what you tend to find um, in this sheltered area that's protected from the wind and from the weather conditions, from the waves in particular, you get further accumulation of sediment. So you get further accumulation of sediment. So we start to get more and more sediment, start to build up behind the spit, which over time can result in, in plants starting to grow, salt-loving plants. So we start to get plants developing behind the spit, okay? And over time, as these salt-loving plants start to develop, um, the area behind the spit can start to form what we call a mud flat or a salt marsh. Okay, so I hope that's helped. That's how a spit forms. Remember, your case study is Spurn Point, Holderness Coast, the UK. Um, <clears throat> get an understanding of how longshore drift works and then apply it to this example, and you should be absolutely fine uh, explaining how a spit forms. Thank you.